Alright guys, we're going to start with part 3 of Unfuck Your Programming. So far we've been dealing with pretty simple stuff. From here on out it's going to get progressively more complicated. So if anything's not clear to you, make sure you leave it in the comments so that I can address that and so I can make it clear in future videos or I can answer your question immediately. Okay? Let's get started. So we've almost got all the pieces that we need to start getting into the actual the fun stuff, right? Right in the splits, right in the sets and wraps. Probably the stuff that you guys are watching for in the first place. So before we get there, we need to talk a little bit about how periodization is generally programmed for the long term, right? So traditionally what you'll have is called a macro cycle, meso cycle, and micro cycle. And that's where the term training cycle actually comes from. So for a lot of different athletes, a macro cycle can be very long, right? So if you're an Olympic athlete, your long-term, think of this as your long-term goals. Your long-term goals are your Olympics. That's a four-year time span. For powerlifting, it's generally not quite so long. As long as you have some type of idea in mind for your long-term goal, that's enough. And you can really focus on these mesocycles, which is what people usually do, right? So you can think of a mesocycle as your traditional program, right? Your 12, 16, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, but 12 or 16 weeks that you're actually writing down, okay, here are my exercises, here are my sets, here are my reps, and go from there. So where you actually go from here is what we're going to talk about today, and that's a microcycle. So each mesocycle broken up into however many microcycles. For most people, a microcycle is just a training week, right? It's just your weekly split. It doesn't have to be a weekly split, right? You could do a five-day microcycle or a nine-day microcycle, but most people use a week because that's, that's the way our lives work, right? It's based on the calendar, and so you have a seven-day work week. Might as well have a seven-day microcycle, and that's perfectly fine. So within your microcycle, then you need to decide, okay, what exercises am I going to do and how am I going to load them? Today we're just going to talk about what exercises you're going to do on which days, right? We're going to make the training split. Right? Some people have very limited amounts of time and can only train once or twice a week. Other people just love to train, right? If you're watching this video, that's probably you, and you want to train five, six, seven days a week. For most people who are focused on strength, training three to four times a week is ideal. But we can start coming up with the split. Now the biggest problem I see people run into is to want to jump into the deep end, right? And so they say, well, I need to squat two or three times a week and bench three or four times a week and deadlift twice a week. So let me just do that from the start, right? So I'm going to squat, 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 and let's see, then I need to bench, right? So let me, and I can bench, 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 and now I need to deadlift. So I might as well put those on a day when I'm not squatting, right? And then I can deadlift again here. And then maybe I need to do biceps, right? So I need my biceps and hamstrings. And then maybe I need pecs. Oh, and I forgot some of these have to be close grip. So this is going to be a close grip bench. Close grip, and then I'll make this a high bar. And so you see how in seconds, right, I've got kind of like this mess, and I have no idea how it goes together, and I'm not going to know how any of it affects me. So that's the wrong way to do things. If you have never programmed before for yourself, ever, I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to start out with a very basic split. The basic powerlifting split, and it's basic for a reason. Bench two days a week, squat and deadlift once. Really doesn't matter what days you choose. I chose these at random. But that's pretty much the traditional powerlifting split, and it's that way for a reason. Almost everyone can recover from this with no problems. And so if you start out like this, then you have a baseline that you know will work for you. You know it will work for you. Maybe it doesn't work optimally, but at least you have somewhere to start. From here, now you can start to make changes. Now, if you've been working on a very simple program to begin with, one that's really proven, right, maybe you're doing strong lifts or something like that, and there's not a lot of fluff to it, and you know it works for you, you can start there. That's perfectly fine. But if you've been doing something like Juggernaut or Cube, where there's all these different moving parts and it's not working quite right for you, and you want to try something different, it's better to back off and to start from something simple. Because here's how it's going to work. Remember how we said that we have frequency and variation that we need to account for? And has, there's no real way to know what's going to be best for my body without actually trying it and then giving my body time to respond. This is where I'm going to do it. I'm going to start with this basic split and I'm going to do it for a little while and I'm going to see, okay, well, how are my lifts going? And if they're all going up, I'm going to stick with this until they stop going up. Okay? Do not mess with something that's working. 
But let's say my bench isn't going so well and I'm not really sure why. That's okay. I'm just gonna make a change, right? So maybe I know when my bench isn't going so well, I'm really struggling with lockout. So I probably need to do some close grip, right? So you're gonna make one change. You're not gonna add a close grip day, right? That's two changes. That's adding a training day and it's adding a variation. You're gonna do one change at a time. So you can either add a day or you can change to a variation. Close grip, okay? So those are your two choices. Do not do both. As soon as you do both, you don't know what's working and what's not, right? So if I added this as a close grip bench day, and it doesn't work, did it not work because I shouldn't have benched the third day, or did it not work because I shouldn't have chosen close grip? Maybe I was overtraining my triceps, I don't know. I'm really stressing this point because it's a mistake I make and I see other people make time and time and time after again. And just avoiding this temptation will save you potentially years of frustration. So one change at a time. Now remember, we have three different lifts that we need to plug in here, right? We have our competition lifts, we also have our variations, and then we have our supplemental lifts. With the supplemental lifts, you have a lot more leeway because the way we program them, right, it's not really gonna affect us to the same degree that it is the competition lifts. So for me, I need to do my rear delts and my glutes, right? Those are my two big lagging muscle groups. And so generally you wanna put your supplemental lifts immediately after the lift that they're helping out. So for me, I'm gonna do rear delts today and here, and then I'm gonna do glutes after my squat and deadlift. And yeah, I added four things at once, but honestly, if doing a little bit of glute work and a little bit of rear delt affects my recovery, there's something else major going wrong. So you don't have to worry about that quite as much. Again, if your supplemental work is hours of biceps and pecs, you're probably doing something wrong. And so you need to revisit that, not the fact that, okay, I added more than one thing at once. From there, you can just kind of keep expanding. So you make one change at a time. Let's say this close grip worked really well. And then your squat starts to stall. Maybe you experiment with adding another day of squats, right? What's probably gonna happen is you're gonna find, okay, well, I squatted and then I squat two days later and then I deadlift two days after that. That's, that's a lot, it's probably gonna be too much, right? You could do a variation. You could change this to front squat, which is gonna be lighter. Or I could say, okay, I'm gonna change my loading parameters. We're gonna to get to that later, all right? We haven't talked about loading parameters yet. I just want you guys to keep it in the back of your head and remember, this is another tool in your, to tool in your toolbox for when we get to that point. All right, so let's talk about adding training days. We're gonna go back to our basic split. I've moved things around, but it doesn't matter. And let's say you wanna train five days a week instead of just four. Training, adding an extra training day per week is very, very difficult in my experience. It's much more difficult than adding an extra time that you're training a particular movement or adding a variation or anything along those lines. And when you think about it, it makes sense, right? Because adding a training day is essentially adding 25% to my workload. Whereas adding an extra day of squats, relatively, especially if it's a low volume day, might be a, little, a lot less than that. So be very, very careful when you add days. When you do, make sure they're pretty light days, right? They're not, and I don't mean light as in your intensity, I just mean light as in overall, they don't feel like they're affecting your recovery that much. So let's add a bench day. Let's say I'm gonna bench on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. All right, so I'm benching three days a week, squatting and deadlifting once. Again, have to wait to see how that affects me, but because benching alone isn't that much, and because I know I can handle bench pressing three or four times a week, it might work out. And if it does, that's great. If it doesn't, again, I need to decide what single change to make. Maybe it says, okay, well, let's make this a real light bench day. Let's do a variation like close group. Or maybe even incline, because incline I usually have to go even lighter. Let's be incline bench. And then let's see how that works for me. Now, I find for squat, bench, and deadlift, generally you can train all three on the same day, and it's not that demanding. And so I usually prefer to add frequency to the days that I'm already training. To, uh, compared to adding an extra training day, which is very, very difficult. You might be different, and that's perfectly fine. There's no reason that you should get in your head that you have to do things the same way I do. But just be very careful when you're adding training days. 
If you really want to train another day and find that you're really struggling and can't add that extra day, my recommendation is either put your supplemental work on that day or do some cardio. Cardio is actually extremely helpful for powerlifters. It'll help get rid of some of your soreness. It'll improve your cardio, improve your recovery. Just make sure you keep it light. Low intensity, steady state is what you're going for, 20 to 30 minutes. Hopefully something low impact too, because you're already putting a pretty good, pretty good load on your joints with the squat and deadlift and bench press. And so you don't want to kind of exacerbate that by say running uphill or running downhill, even worse. Um, so I prefer the elliptical myself, but that can make a big difference. And for a lot of people, it can kind of give them, can satisfy their urge for training. But um, adding your supplemental work on an extra day is, is a great idea too. And then maybe over time you can say, okay, maybe I'm now ready to add that extra training day and you're able to do it a little bit more smoothly. So just to recap, when you sit down to write your program, make sure you have a timeline. This is your macro cycle, at least have a long-term goal. Know your mesocycle, okay, so I have 12, I have 16, maybe I have 24 weeks to play with. And then you can set, get set on writing your weekly training split. When you start with that split, start with three to four days a week. Down the line, you can experiment with five or six, but if you haven't been devising your own program this far, it's better to start simple. Start with the basic split. You can make changes slowly, one at a time. You can change frequency, you can change variation, or you can change your training days per week. But change one at a time and give your body time to adjust to it so that you know how that change affects you. Last thing, because I know you guys are curious, my prep for Reebok Records, Record Breakers right now, this is what I'm doing for the final month. So on Sunday, I have light bench press and rear delts. Monday, heavy squat and glute ham raise. Wednesday, heavy bench, JM press, which I consider a close variation because it makes my bench go up, my JM press goes up, my bench goes up, and rear delts. And then on Friday, deadlift, light squats, and incline bench. So I'm benching three times a week, squatting twice, pulling once, which if you think back, that's about my ideal. Um, but that's pretty much it. I have very few, very few accessory movements. I've got the, the rear delts and the GHR, and then I have the, the two bench variations. So that's really all there is to it. You do not need a very complicated split in order to get really, really strong. Again, next time we'll talk about percentages. Uh, it's going to get a lot more complicated from here. So stick with me, ask questions, and 